Welcome to the final 48 hours of lawmaking at the Minnesota State Capitol. Uh, we're obviously disappointed that uh, the bonding bill went down today. That was an expected outcome. At this point, I feel that we've extended so many olive branches to Kurt Dowd that we've given him an entire olive tree. And um, he did reach a new low on the House floor, though. I, I have heard him lie about Mark Dayton. And I've heard him lie about Tom Bach, Paul Thiessen, Paul Gazelka, and Tim Walls. But today he kind of hit a new low when he stated that this was not a bipartisan bonding bill. Mary Murphy had 43 hearings. She heard 250 bills. They spent uh, 3,000 miles on the road. And the bill was replete with Republican projects, uh, including a project in the leader's own district. Uh, the simple fact is this uh, leader of the GOP caucus uh, has not participated in any meaningful way uh, in coming up with solutions about how to come to an agreement at the end of the session. And uh, there have been extensive uh, five-party conversations. In fact, we were on the phone with the governor until 9.15 last night with Senator Gazelka, Senator Kent, myself, and Representative Doubt. Uh, just the latest in a number of negotiating sessions to try to reach a bipartisan agreement here at the end of session. But at a certain point, you have to really bring something to the table other than general unhappiness. Because at the legislature, we don't address general unhappiness. We solve specific problems in bills. And so if you don't bring language that you'd like to discuss, at a certain point, you're just an obstacle and you're irrelevant. So I, I guess I would say to Leader Doubt, it's time to lead, follow, or get out of the way. Majority Leader? Well, unfortunately, this is a similar pattern to what we saw last year. In 2019, in the regular session, the governor, the Republicans in the Senate, the Democrats in the Senate, and the Democrats in the House were all ready to pass a $440 million bonding bill. are sick of people's lives. It is not something that we can actually address through legislation. So we hope that uh, we can get to the point of a little bit more cooperation and willingness to actually negotiate. And so far, uh, we are not seeing it out of the House minority. We're happy to take your questions. Peter Callahan, go ahead. Uh, hi. I know you guys know me as a glass half full guy. So let me point out something that the minority leader said today. He said, we will have a bonding bill. It will just not be this bonding bill. And then he said, or actually he previously said, that we are going to be back in session on June 13th and we can take it up then. The only way you're back in session June 13th is if the governor has again extended the emergency a peacetime emergency declaration. So it seemed to me he was saying that in such a session with an emergency still declared, there will be a bonding bill, just not this bonding bill. Did I misread that? Well, the leader has contended uh, to the governor repeatedly that uh, he does not back away from the statement that there will be no bonding bill so long as the uh, peacetime emergency is in effect. And, you know, in The Godfather, um, Marlon Brando made an offer they couldn't refuse. In this case, Leader Dowd is making an offer nobody can accept. It doesn't make any sense. I feel like I walked into that one. The point has been made to him by Senator Gazelka indirectly and Senator Gazelka's press availability after um, uh, Representative Dowd's um, statement on, on May 2nd. Uh, putting this ridiculous ultimatum out there, uh, even the, the majority leader in the Senate said, there are 50 of these in the 50 states. Uh, there is a national state of emergency. We have a pandemic. Uh, what, more than 80,000 people have now died in the United States of America, uh, with many more 
uh, slated to go, unfortunately, before this is over. And so for the minority leader in the House to tie a bonding bill to exercise of emergency powers that are being exercised to protect Minnesotans from a pandemic just doesn't make any sense. And it is not something he has backed away from. Thanks. All right, Brianna says she has a follow-up to Peter's question. Go ahead. Hey, it seemed like part of the message was that everybody knows we're going to be back on June 12th. So what is the urgency to get some of these things done now? I mean, could either of you address if there is a feeling of urgency um, in these conversations you're having with the governor and the Senate about getting a deal on bonding and a handful of other things uh, by Sunday night? Well, we have a body of work in front of us now. We have the bonding bill. We have some supplemental funding requests from the governor that are urgent. There shouldn't have to be a trade. Uh, House Republicans shouldn't have to get something, um, you know, like a goodie for some donor in order to build things in the state of Minnesota and to make sure that we have the money that we need to pay the prison guards, uh, help uh, keep COVID-19 at bay in the prisons. And if we were to complete this work in front of us now, then we have a, an enormous body of an additional work that we can attack when we come back in June. We still have issues in long-term care. We still have issues in the meat processing plants. Um, and what Representative Dowd has contended is that the legislature should be a part of making decisions and solving problems for the people of Minnesota. But what he repeatedly demonstrates is that he has an unwillingness and an inability to solve problems and to compromise and to get things done for the people of Minnesota. I mean, his primary contention is that the governor shouldn't be exercising executive authority. These are, these are actions that should be undertaken by the legislature. And then uh, he, he makes that statement uh, ridiculous by proving time and time again that he's not up to the task of participating in solving problems. All right, next question from Dana Ferguson. Is the Senate bonding bill an acceptable compromise? Uh, the Senate bill isn't a compromise. The Senate bill is the Senate's bill. Um, and Representative Murphy's bill is um, the House bill. And there, a compromise would be some blend of the two. Uh, Esme Murphy just texted me. Hold on. Um, Minority Leader Doubt said he believes a bonding bill can happen by tomorrow night or in a June 12 session. Do you see any pathway forward to that, considering the obvious divide that exists here? You've touched on that a little bit already. Well, we have the lost sheep that Ryan talked about, <laughs> the Majority Leader talked about. We have the potential that uh, Representative Doubt finds a way off the limb that he's put himself out onto. Um, but, you know, just again, I think what we've seen from Representative Doubt is not any potential constructive solutions. And in fact, just a desire to increase conflict. Um, you know, Chair Murphy spent weeks in April with Representative Erdahl. We in fact know that there's $953 million of shared priorities between the two caucuses in the House. Um, so there has been just considerable bipartisan work. Uh, and we easily could come to conclusion if uh, Representative Dow would, would give permission for his caucus to play ball. And just to add to that, it would be, uh, you know, we have time enough to come to an agreement with the Senate Republicans and the Senate Democrats and the governor on a bonding bill, uh, because all of us are actually interested in having one. What we saw last year is a caucus leader who simply didn't want it to happen. And so under those circumstances, no, it is not possible. All right, next question from Ricardo Lopez. Where does that leave the bonding bill this weekend? And do you expect action on the pay raises for state employees by Sunday night? Well, um, the issue is not um, pay raises. The issue is, should we ratify the state contracts? It's a light switch question. It's a yes or no. We don't get to renegotiate them. Under state law, we either approve or we disapprove. We do not have grounds to disapprove and approve them, so they should be approved. And I would hope that we would be able to get that work done before we leave. In terms of the prospects of a bonding bill, you know, a lot can happen on the last Sunday. I think uh, last year on the last Sunday was when we got the deal for a nearly $50 billion budget. So a lot can happen very quickly. But again, it takes the spirit of compromise. And I think what you've seen with Senator Gazelka 
and me and the governor is a willingness to work together and be pragmatic and set aside those areas where it will be very difficult to find an agreement and to focus on the areas where we have common ground and get things done for the people of Minnesota. Now the dynamic this year is we have to have the minority leaders in the debate and in the conversation. And the minority leader in the Senate, Susan Kent, is ready to get work done for the people of Minnesota. We just have one obstacle. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, oh, there's another one from Peter. He has another one if everyone else is finished. Go ahead, Last Peter. half full. Back to yes. you. Yes. Um, can you sketch out the last 36 hours for us as of now? I mean, this year is different because usually you're not as certain to be in special session in whatever it is, three weeks or so. That isn't usually the case. So it seems as though it's taken some pressure off. And I'm just wondering if you could, again, as best you can, sketch out what the next 36 hours looks like, what, what has to be done, what you'd like to get off the table. Um, you know, how late you want to go tomorrow night, things like that. Well, I would anticipate a very full day today making law. Uh, for the most part, the focus will be on uh, passing bills where there's agreement with the Senate. Uh, in the last couple of days, we sent 11 bills to the governor's desk. So there'll be more of that in the area of health and human services, health, transportation, uh, education, a lot of good work, good bipartisan compromise getting done. I would expect we will go off and on today, perhaps late into the night, um, perhaps as late as midnight. And then tomorrow, I would expect that we're in um, starting at 10 a.m., probably, uh, maybe earlier, depending, uh, and that we will likely go to midnight. Um, and then, yeah, we'll likely go to midnight. And then Monday, we intend to pick up the retirement speeches at noon, uh, just in case we're in the wee hours on Sunday and people need a little bit of sleep before we do retirement speeches. Normally people go home uh, who live out in greater Minnesota. And so we, no matter how tired we are, we just push through and do them. But this year, given that some of them will be by Zoom and um, people can listen by Zoom, uh, they will all be on Monday starting at noon. And as far as things that have to happen, we need to resolve the state worker contracts and not throw the whole state workforce into chaos, especially in the middle of a pandemic when these people are actually working and performing essential services on our behalf. So that's essential. Uh, and in general, it's much better to resolve these issues now. It doesn't actually make it easier doing it in June. It just means that uh, we have more time to dance around the issues instead of sitting down and actually uh, cutting a deal. Uh, Dana Ferguson, can you give us an update on where conversations on housing assistance, broadband, and PCA raises stand? Well, I have really good conversations with Senator Gazelka about PCA raises. I think there's a sincere desire to try to find a way to do that. With regard to housing assistance and broadband, those are items that can be funded out of the Federal CARES Act money. Um, and those decisions will be made by the administration um, and using the LAC process. So I feel confident that uh, Governor Walls knows where our caucus is on the housing assistance and the broadband issues, and that we'll see some good uh, spending decisions made by them. Uh, Brianna asked, uh, any other calls planned with governor and Senate today? I was trying to look at my email a little bit while we we're doing this. I haven't seen my email um, since we left the floor. Um, there is likely to be one. I know the Republican uh, the state convention was happening today. And so the intention when we got off the phone last night around 9.15 p.m., we talked about um, having another call this evening around 8, 8.30 or 9. I understand they're having technical difficulties with the GOP convention. So maybe um, Senator Gazelka and Representative Dow will be available earlier than that. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So unless you have any uh closing thoughts? No, there's a lot of good work for us to do for the people of Minnesota. You know, the first five weeks we had this pandemic, we had really kind of a magical moment that we need to get back to. And everybody needs to put in the effort to get back there. Not looking at how to be an obstacle can help them raise money or get elected, but looking at working together and solving problems for the people of Minnesota. We can always resume our regularly scheduled programming, which is fighting about whether there should be things like minimum wage, pro-life, pro-choice, 
just general disposition towards taxes and what kind of society we want to live in. But we really don't need to make the pandemic that's already killed hundreds of Minnesota Minnesotans a political issue. And we really don't need to have that getting in the way of us getting our work done. So um, I guess those are my closing thoughts. Majority Leader? You said it, Madam Speaker. Okay. We'll see you guys back on the floor. Thanks, everyone.